Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Jerome's. We thank you for celebrating the liturgy with us on this, the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. As we prepare to enter into the sacred mystery of the liturgy, please be sure that all cell phones and electronic equipment are turned off or in silent mode. Jesus sends his apostles to preach and bring the good news of his word to the people. This mission will be carried on not only by Christ's apostles, but by their successors, the bishops, but also by ordained ministers, religious men and women, and by lay persons. We are called on to receive God's messengers who preach repentance and announce the good news to all of us. Please stand. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, as we enter this 15th Sunday in ordinary time, the Lord reminds us that we are all missionaries sent forth to bring the good news to all of our brethren. And as we look into this mission of being sent forth by the loving God, we also ask Him to make us worthy by asking for forgiveness of His mercy and compassion. We all together say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away. See? 
show the light of your truth to those who go astray so that they may return to the right path give all for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor trouble Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, priest of Bethel, said to Amos, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. God, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall keep. Shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord Himself will give His benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of God's grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, in accord with his favor, that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times, to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Everything from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, Leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured all of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. I hope you still remember those stories that I had shared with you regarding the bell. But now, let me share some stories again, aside from that stories about ringing the bell in one of those churches that we have back home. It's one of the things that I have always kept in my memory, in my early years in my priesthood, was my motorcycle. That motorcycle, my dear friends, has been with me in the past maybe three years, in my first years in my ministry in the priesthood. It's very convenient, you know, when I visited 
the small churches to say mass, for example, and also drive in order to get into my destination. Well, as a young priest, I cannot afford to have a four-wheel car, but that motorcycle brought me to anywhere I want to go for my apostolate and my priestly ministry. It is very economical, too. Your two dollars could bring you to anywhere for four weeks. Imagine that. <laughs> I'd rather just ride back to that motorcycle again. Well, also, my dear friends, that motorcycle is very interesting. It has a basket in front of it, and you know where those baskets for, because when you celebrate Mass, it is quite interesting to note they don't only bring the gifts, not only the host for consecration or the cruets for the blood of Christ that we consecrate at Mass, but they also bring fruits, fruits of their harvests, like you see vegetables like eggplants, watermelon, and all and everything. Just can't imagine after Mass what I am bringing and those are filled in the basket in front of that motorcycle while I am driving back home to the convent in the parish I am also bringing forth with me all those fruits and vegetable so maybe I could do a little racket there I'll bring a fruit stand and, and a vegetable stand in the parish to raise money for the parish as well but anyway my dear friends it made me recall that time and that moment because bringing along and going to different places in that motorcycle reminds me of the very calling of Jesus to his disciples. Jesus just simply teach his disciples, I am sending you forth for a mission. Do not bring along with you a second tunic. Do not bring along with you money in your packets. Do not bring along with you certain things that you would feel very secure on everything. Is it the reason that Jesus would want his disciples empty-handed when they do all these things? Probably not. It is truly to feel how it is to become a true missionary. Because a true missionary felt that emptiness of himself or herself relying totally to the providence of the one who sends that missionary. And it quite makes sense, my dear friends, because we cannot serve the loving Lord on a mission when we are too full of our own selves. And thus the process of being called as an apostle, as a missionary of the Lord, is practically for us to experience that emptiness within us. And probably it starts with physical poverty, for example. We need not to become secured of the many things and thus become open to what is given on the mission. On the second stage of our gospel states that go and visit the houses and feel blessed when they welcome you in their homes. And this comes with the providence. I think it makes sense for Jesus to teach this to his disciples because entering the house and with the house giving you the providence, it is not only teaching the apostles to become empty-handed, but also teaching them how it is to become a channel of God's faithfulness to all of them. Their presence in the very homes would generate what we call the ministry of evangelizing, bringing Jesus to their respective homes. And perhaps, with this kind of attitude the disciple has been doing, they have gradually bring forth the consciousness of Jesus to each and everyone that they visit. 
One of the stories to my dear friends when it comes to my motorcycle experience was I also visited um, the prisons. Uh, I celebrated Mass one time that was a Christmas Eve. And um, it was very touching to note that um, the warden of the prison told me that for Christmas, Father, now we will be allowing the inmates to get out of their cell. So he's giving me a heads up. And they will be surrounding you. And we're going to put an altar there, a small altar. Don't worry of anything. Nothing will happen. This is only once in a year that we're celebrating liturgy or mass together with them. And then it was quite very what we call meaningful experience for me as I celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And during communion, we sang Salad Night. And every inmate of that place sang the song with much meaning. They were all teary-eyed at the same time trying to also receive Holy Communion as we sing together that very song on a Christmas Eve. I think it also increases my consciousness about how it is to become a missionary. To become a missionary of Jesus is one for us to experience how it is to immerse. Aside from being empty-handed, we need to immerse ourselves to the very feet of the one that we are bringing forth the mission. And that is why, dear friends, when we say Jesus calls us to serve the poor, it is not only to give something for the poor, but also to serve the poor and immerse our own very selves in their very lives. It is not only the what we call the monetary providence that we could give for them, but we also need to immerse our own very selves for them. After all, most of them does not only need our own assistance when it comes to monetary assistance, we also need our own presence also to be immersed in their very world. And I think to become an apostle of Jesus is not just simply to see all of these things right before our eyes. It is also to experience with much discernment within us. Because what we see in our mission brings forth to us certain discernment. We're able to judge. We're able to see and evaluate what we have seen. We are able to what we call look into our own consciousness and at the same time within our own selves as well. How am I going to do my mission after all these things that what I have done? Finally, my dear friends, in the fruits of our own judgment comes forth our own very selves making that particular decision. And that is what we call acting on what we have seen, acting on what we have judged, and then translating everything of this to the very works of God. Concrete works, not like only just trying to think about, oh, I am trying to help them in my absence. But Jesus sends forth his disciple in the most literal way of sending them. And Jesus telling them, I am sending you forth in two by two, not as a group, but he is sending them spreading throughout the different parts of the world so that they may be able to truly become the witness of the mission. And I think, my dear friends, as Jesus has called his disciples, as Jesus has called the many people, the early Christian communities, and at the same time now that it has grown into our own very faith, that Jesus has been spread throughout the world with us also being conscious of the many, 
missionaries of the world that spread this good news of our salvation. Truly, this heart of Christ has molded within us this consciousness within our faith. Finally, my dear friends, it is only our love for Jesus becomes the heartbeat of our own mission. If we do not love the Lord, we would never do all of these things. There are lots of saints, great examples in our church, missionaries in our own fruitful journey, and probably also in our parish as well. We have seen a lot of our brothers and sisters who has immersed themselves to the call to become a missionary of our Lord. The past few days, our young parishioners being assisted by the different facilitators and crews of our mission trip has been serving our locality from making some ramps, from cleaning and um, doing some carpentry works in the different areas of Newport News. This is also one of the things that we could see witness in concrete sense of you. They have allowed themselves to become missionaries in the different places of which those who are in need as well. And it has just not simply become an eye-opener, but at the same time, they immerse themselves to the reality of those who are truly in need. My dear friends, we are called to become missionaries of our Lord. Being baptized to the faith, being called as disciples of the loving Lord, we are gifted to see, we are gifted to discern, and at the same time, we are empowered to act upon the many things in our own capacity. Jesus is calling us, and Jesus is sending us forth. believe all things visible and invisible I believe one Lord Jesus Christ before all ages God from God light from light true God from true God we got it not made cause substantial with the Father And became man for us to save under Pontius Pilate. Put into the scriptures. Proceeds in the Father and the Son. With the Father, the Son is adored and glorified. It was spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and to look forward to the resurrection of the dead and a life to the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray to the Heavenly Father that we may become faithful disciples as we take on God's call to love unconditionally. Our Let us pray. Our response, Lord, hear our prayer. May the church, the people of God, <clears throat> become a family of disciples and one beacon of light who faithfully lives out the person of Christ, the one true light. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayers. May all government leaders and public servants become faithful disciples of Christ.
May they accomplish their duties and responsibilities by adhering to God's commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May you grant all of us gathered here today who face life's difficulties the grace of holy endurance and the will to remain faithful to you. We pray to the Lord. May all consecrated religious, sisters and brothers, remain steadfast to their vows and continue to be living examples to us on our journey to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. May all people going through the trial of illness, especially Shirley Lentz, be given the strength and the patience to endure and the hope and the faith to return to health. We pray also for our dearly departed, especially Willie Ray Skinner and soon Osmond. Strengthen our faith in the resurrection so that we wait in confidence for the day we are reunited with them and with our Heavenly Father. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray in thanksgiving for the success and safekeeping of all those who were involved in our mission trip. May their efforts bear material and spiritual benefits to all who were helped by their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For Peter W. Loesch, Jr., for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of our heart's desire. May your will be done in our lives. May we be configured to the person of Christ, the perfect disciple of the Father, to Christ our Lord. Amen. May the brethren may sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all of his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that 
when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. To Christ our Lord, for through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and the angels, with thrones and the dominions and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we will be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope and barry our bishop and all the clergy Remember also, brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Glorious Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. May God bless you always. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Your brother, you are sent forth from this assembly to bring the word of God and the bread of life to the sick and homebound members of our parish family. Go to them with our love, our care, and our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, a gentle healer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Just as a reminder, while Father George is away, we will be moving your daily Mass intentions to the next available open date. Please call the office if you have any questions. Volunteers are still needed to help in the nursery, to assist with the children's liturgy, and to help with the Sunday school. The nursery opens on Sunday, July 18th, during the 9 a.m. Mass. We really need your help. Calling all middle school and high school students, learn how to play Frisbee golf on Wednesday, July 14th at 5 to 6.30 p.m. and pizza will be included. Please note that family game night is canceled this coming Friday, July 16th. And please continue to monitor the parish newsletter for important information. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A holy mass has been offered. We now go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 